Okay, back to factorial. So the four factors, four times three times two, you always start with the number and you keep going down each time till you get a, to a one there. Three factorial, three times two times one. Two factorial is two times one. One factorial is one, zero factorial is one. Try not to make sense out of this. It doesn't fit the format, but that's the definition of it. You can't take the factorial of a negative number. Now, the definition of n factorial, when you look at it, it says n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three, each time decrease it by one, all the way till you get to two, then one. That's the definition of n factorial. We're gonna use that a lot in counting here. When we start talking about permutations and combinations, we'll use it. So I wanna make sure you know what a factorial is before we start dealing with it. Now, just to do some math here, just to make sure you understand that, if, you, if somebody said to you, can you give me 95 factorial divided by 92 factorial? Well, you say, I can go to my calculator and push the buttons. Well, we have a little problem there. Yep, calculator will go up to 69 factorial. So let's see if this one, this is a little bit more powerful. Does it do 95 factorial? So let me go to, the TI-89 does, by the way. So let me find the math. Where's the math on this one? Or statistic probability. Uh, is there a math button somewhere? Under algebra? This one? Oh, no, I'm using 89. Yeah, 89, yeah. Yeah, it should be somewhere there's a button. 95 factorial? Yep. Oh, it's not going to do it, but it has a factorial yeah. button. Yeah, it does have a factorial Does the 89 do it? It says overflow. Yep. No, the, the 36 do it. Yeah, that one do it. Yeah, like I, can I have one of those that doesn't do it. No. So one way of doing this is 95. Scott, go ahead. Could it be just be 95 times 94 times 93? Yep. Each time, then times what? 92, 91, 90, and so forth. Well, what is 92 times 91 not times this? Isn't that 92 factorial instead of listing all of them? Yeah. So instead of writing the whole thing, times 92, times 91, times 90, times 89, well, that's a 92 factorial. You divide that by 92 factorial, and you can see these two will cancel each other out. So I have 95 times 94 times 93. So you multiply these guys out, and it's 830490. 830,490 zeros. The reason most calculators will not do anything above 69 factorial because that number becomes so big it goes into scientific notation so when they write the number they go 9.825 something like this times 10 to the power and they give you two spots for that power with the when you put 69 factorial that's the biggest number that power now is 98 when you go to 70 that power now becomes more than 100 or 100, and they can write three digits in two spots, and that's why you have the overflow. So most calculators that you have there will give you only up to 69 factorial. I think the 89 does give you higher than that. I just don't remember off the top of my head where that, was, that button was. I found it. You did? Yeah. And I got this nice calculator, the new one. And I don't use this that often. I couldn't even tell you where the statistics, but let's turn it on and see. We don't probability for me. Uh, let's see. This is menu. <coughs> Numbers. 
finance, statistics, maybe. Is, oh, yeah, there's a probability. I didn't see a probability, actually. How do you get out of this? Escape. escape. Where's escape? Escape. Probability. Factorial. Let's see. Oh, I got to take the answer first. I got to write a number, so clear here. Let's say 70 factorial. I don't know if this will do it. So, menu. Probability. Factorial. If you just press the number 5, will it select that menu instead of scrolling? I'll get to check and see. So this one does actually a 70 factorial. It doesn't give to you a scientific notation. You could probably set it up for scientific notation. Yeah, I could. Just don't know how yet. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it does everything. Can I do 100 factorial? Uh, again, menu. You said five. Let's see if it goes to it. Yes, it does. And one factorial. Enter. Yep. But this, I uh, call a hundred bucks for this one. <coughs> so this particular one does it, but it doesn't really matter if your calc can do it or not. You can always do the math without having to go through that. I'll leave this handy here. Power off. I like it, I just don't use it that much. So, but most calculus, that's as big as the biggest number you will have because of that value here. Once you go to three digits here, then you can get a bigger number. Now, why are we looking at factorial? Because we're going to be talking about something called permutation and something called combinations. Now, before we get to that, let's, let's just give you a story. This morning I went to the gym to work out and I have a locker. On my locker, I have one of those locks. It has numbers, zero all the way to 49. Looks like a rabbit there, but it's supposed to be a lock there. And you go one direction and you stop at a number you come back the opposite direction, you pass it, you stop another number, then you can go forward to the third number and you stop. Now, this actually, this locker came with the numbers already on it. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, I don't know if you can repeat a number or not. I'm not sure. Most of them you can. Let's assume, we'll do it both ways, repeat is allowed. And we'll do a repeat is not allowed. And we'll see how many different ways we can do it. Now, if repeat is allowed, you have a three digit number, three of them. For the first digit, how many choice first? To open that lock there, you have to get this one right and this one right and this one right. And in statistics or probability means what? Multiplications. So how many different choices for the first digit? When you're trying to make that number for your locker initially, when you try to set that number, Jimbo, how many choices do you have? For, for the first one, 50. For the second one, how many choices? 50 again. For the next one, how many choices? Like that, Mr. McDonald? Except that's not properly named. That's called a combination lock. That's a permutation lock. There we go, Mr. McDonald. You're on the ball there. 50 to the power 3. And we have 125 different combinations exist. Actually, Mr. McDonald was wrong on that statement. Both combination and permutation, there's no repeat allowed in them. I don't want to tell him that. 
Uh, he was my teacher years ago. <laughs> yep. In 1977, he was my teacher. So I'm, I'm, I'm just happy he's still alive. So we'll tell him. Um, yeah. So there's 125,000 sets of numbers we can make. And only one of them is going to work. I have to say, I got a bike and I have one of those lock on it, and I forgot it goes zero through ten, but there's four sets of them, and I forgot the combination. And I did actually, and it took me about uh, two weeks. Every day I go, I'll do about a thousand of them, zero 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 one zero zero one. Finally, I got it to open. I got the number. Yep. I, I, honestly, yep. And I, yep. I kept. And the worst part, the first time I missed it, when I pulled. It didn't open. I went from zero all the way to nine, 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 nine. It didn't open. So you did the then I had to go backward. Now I start with nine, 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 nine. Go back till I open there. There's a way with the if you forget the combo to this lock, there's a way you can pick them. Uh, there's a generator online that you go to it and then you like feel it and like uh, feel like the rough spot. We try feel, but sometimes you feel like going in the wrong spot. I try that, like to feel if. A, Hold on it and see if you can feel something. Yeah, but it there's a like, it will, it, it instructs no. you how to do it, like, uh, and then you plug in, like, the rough spot, and then it'll give you uh, a few different combinations. Hmm. Well, I hope I'm, I don't forget that again. <laughs> now, if you can't repeat, then what happens? You get 50 for the first one, 49 for the next one, and 48. Now remember here, for this to open, it really the order is important in both cases. Meaning what? If your combination is 22, 17, and 34, it's not going to open if you put 17, 22, and 34. It has to be in that order to open it. So for both of these, order is important. Now that'll be 50 times 49 times 48, and you have 117,000. There's less chances, that's good. 117,600 different sets of combinations you can make to open that lock. So if somebody wanna steal your stuff from your locker and they come and go on the first try to open, <clears throat> the only way that could happen if the person's the luckiest person on earth or close to that, or you lift it and un really unlock there. You never pushed it all the way in. Because just to be able, there's that many sets there, to be able to hit the first one or just to hit it on the first try, it's almost impossible. 117,600 chance. So your chance one out of that number with one set. So the probability of you opening that locker, opening on the first try. Your odds are still better than the lottery. It is better than, well, much better than a lottery there. Yep. I was If somebody stores a, a million dollars in a locker with a combination lock, there's your chance. There's your chance. Point zero 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 probability means zero zero eight five. So to open it on the first try, you have point zero 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 eight five percent. That's in percent. That's why I don't believe it was. Oh, I just opened it. I pulled on it and opened. Yeah, it's not impossible. It could happen, <laughs> but the chance is really slim there. You know why people probably say that is because some people leave their combination locks on the last number. So yep. I can tell you mine's easier. If you flip my lock, the number's written on the back of it. <laughs> Honestly, because I can't remember. I've been using it for about two or three years. <laughs> what is really the point of that then? Nobody said nobody seems to figure that out. <laughs> and if the number is written on the back, and it's been like that for the last three, four years. So now, 
If you can repeat, it gives you more chances. Same thing if you're ordering a pizza. Shouldn't be talking about food now. And you go to, I don't know, Antonio's Pizza, or pizza shop in East Long Meadows. Nice pizza there. And they go, you get to pick, I want a combination. It says pick any four out of 10. Let's say they have 10 items. You get to choose any four. The question becomes, can I repeat? Let's say, for example, I like, I don't know, mushroom. Can you make it instead of a mushroom, pepperoni, sausage, and onions, mushroom, 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 mushroom? If they said you can do that, then how many different pizzas can you make? No, because you get 10 items. You can repeat an item. Yep. So um, let's see, For the, if you can repeat again, for the first item, when they say pick four, you have 10 choices. For the second item, since you can repeat, you have what? 10 choices. For the third item, you have what? 10 choices. For the fourth item, you have what? 10 choices. So you can make actually 10,000 different pizzas. So as a pizza shop owner, I can claim, if you come to us, you can come for the next three years and eat pizza every single day, get a pizza every day without getting the same pizza again. Because look how many different combinations. Now, if it says no repeat, yep, so probably 30 years, yeah. No repeat, what do we have? 10 for the first one. Nine for the second one, eight for the next one, seven for the next one, but wait. I said wait. We're gonna divide. Why? Cheese, pepperoni, mushroom, onions. Is that the same as cheese, mushroom, onions, pepperoni? Is it the same as cheese, pepperoni, onions, mushrooms. This one treats them as different ones. So you guys see all these are still the same pizza. Which one you put first on the pizza is not gonna make the pizza better or worse. So I need to divide that by how many different sets. Well, what do we have here? How many, them four? By four factorial. Because if you list how many different combinations out of four, I guarantee you it's 24 different combinations, the four factorial. So your number now is gonna be 10 times nine times eight times seven divided by four factorial, which is 24. And you will have 210 different combinations. Now, this one here, too. Yep, let's look at them the same. So now, having seen that, because you can't really see it with cheese, 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 right? So the order you put them is not really the same, so you're gonna divide by what? Or 24, which is the four factorial. Because the four item depends which one you put them. It doesn't matter if you put the cheese first, and the cheese first, and the cheese first. So I should divide that by 24, and that will make it what? So you're not gonna have 10,000 now, divided by 24, you're gonna have 416, 417 different combinations of pizza. So you can go a year plus without getting the same pizza. Because when you put them like this, I couldn't prove it before, because I want to show you different ones. So when you do that, you get to see, well, that's the same pizza. So I can't count them as different pizzas. So now we have a couple of methods. I keep saying repeat and no repeat. We have something called permutation. We have something called combinations. The permutations
permutation <coughs> or permutations. We write that N P R. You have N item, choose R. How many different ways? Permutations. N P R. The equation for that, the definition is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. When do we use permutation? We have that on your calculator, you'll see in a minute there. When do we use the permutation? We use the permutation when the order counts, that means important, and when you have no repeat. Repeating is not allowed. The other one is called combinations. And we go N combination R. That's N factorial over N minus R factorial times the R factorial. When do we use that? When the order doesn't count. So the order counts here, should be counts, and no repeat. This one, order doesn't count, not important. And also no repeat. So when Mr. McDonald says, he's gonna listen to me on video now, when you say one is permutation, one is combination for the previous one, no, because for both of these, you can't have a repeat. Now an example, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We get 15 of us in the class today, not counting me. 15. And let's say we're going to select now, we have an engineering club here. We have a ski club. I happen to be the advisor for both, the ski club and the engineering club. We don't go skiing because they don't give us any money. <laughs> you know, so they give us like 100 bucks and that's it. Good luck. So the ski club, we're gonna select the president, vice president, and secretary. We're gonna select three people. The fact I'm making one of them is the president, one is the vice president, one is the secretary, that says the order we select them is important. Because you could be the president of this key club, which you get to make all the decision, or you could be the person just taking the notes. So I'd rather be the president. There's a difference in the president versus the secretary. Imagine if it's the country. Don't you want to be the president instead of the secretary? I want to be the president. I want to live in the White House. So now, since one person can't be the president, vice president, secretary, this is not Russia here. Max is gonna get mad at me here. Putin controls everything there. So this is not Putin here. Here in the US, we have a president, vice president, secretary. Not the same person. So no repeat is allowed. And the order we select them is important. So it has to be what? No repeat. Order is important, that's permutation. We have 15 people, NPR, we're gonna select three. How many different ways we can select 15 out of three? That's 15 factorial over 15 minus three factorial. Which will be what? 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 factorial divided by what? 12 factorial. So if you don't have a good calculator, you can still do it by hand. I'll show you in a minute. You can go to your calculator and type these numbers in. But in case you don't have one, 15 times 14 times 13. And that's 2730. 2,700 
and 30 different ways we can select three people from this class, <coughs> one to be the president, one to be the vice president, and one to be the secretary. Now, in the next example, all of you are going to be members of the ski club, even if you don't ski. You are a member of the ski club. And our job is to go down to student activities and convince them to give us more money. We need more money for the ski club, so we need a committee to go down just to convince them. So in this case, does it really matter if Trent's name was pulled first or Scott's name was pulled second or Timmy was third? No. So the order we're going to select these people is not important. So in this case, order is not important. And no repeat. I'm not going to just send Trent by himself there. I'm going to send three people, three different people. <coughs> so now this problem becomes a combination, 15 and CR3, which is 15 factorial over 15 minus 3 factorial times the 3 factorial. Again, 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 factorial over what? 12 factorial times. What's 3 factorial? Isn't that 6? It's 455 different ways. And again, the reason we're dividing by six, I said we're going to send Trent, Scott, Timmy, I can't use, already use T here, Omar. You're going to go now in place of Timmy. So now, that's the same group as if I pick Trent, Omar, and Scott. That's the same as Omar, Trent, and Scott, or Omar, Scott, and Trent. That's the same as Scott, Omar, and Trent. Scott, Trent, and Omar. It's the same three people. So how many different ways we wrote the three people here? Six times. That's why we divide by six factorial. <coughs> because that's still the same group. If I was looking for the first person, the president, the second one, vice president, this treasurer, it's different. That becomes that, and that's why this number is six times that number. Because for this one, each one of these is different group. Now, earlier somebody said, oh, you got a better chance of winning the Powerball than, uh, you know, opening that combination lock. Let's look at the Powerball, which is, i got to go buy some numbers. And I forgot exactly how many, so let me just go online, quickly research that. And I'll show you how to use the calculator in a second. I think we have two baskets. I know one is the yellow basket that has the power ball, the other one is the white one that has the normal ball. But I can't remember if 76 balls there or 59. So let me just Google that quickly. So you gotta match five numbers from one and one number from the yellow one. So this is what we have. We need to select five from this basket, and you have to match them. And at the same time, you need to match this number to win the big prize. Select one here. I think this has 37 of them, but I'll find out in a second here. Powerball. Rules, I don't know. There we go. How to play Powerball. You know, take a little nap. The machine will come to me in a minute there. Okay. We have 
69 every Wednesday and Saturday Eastern Time. We draw five white balls out of a drum with 69. So there are 69 in this drum here. 69 balls and we select five. And the yellow one, we draw one from a basket that has what? 26 red balls. The good news about the power ball, when the balls come out, you'll see them, they go 5, <coughs> 9, 13, 7, 24. The order is not important. And they shuffle them and they put them in the right order. So order for that is not important. As long as you get the same five balls, which one came out first when you open the shoot doesn't matter. So order is not important. And no repeat. When I say no repeat, no repeat here. This could be the same ball, but they took different baskets. But here in this basket, there is no repeat. There is no two balls that says seven on them. So it's one, two, three, four, five, all the way. So you need to match this and match that. Since the order is not important, no repeat, that tells me it's combinations. So I got 69 balls here. Combination is select five. And, and means multiply. We got 26 here. And see, I'm going to select one. Now, before we do the math, let's see what they're telling me. What is my chance of winning here? To see if we get that number. The power ball. Nine ways to win. Ready? The big prize. Your ch if you only buy one ticket, if you buy one ticket, your chance of winning for one ticket only if you buy is one out of what? 292 million. 201 thousand 338. So now let's see if the math agrees with us. You need to get this one and this one. I know the answer to this is 26. What is the answer to this? 69. Now, there's a button on your cap where you can do that in one click if you have the probability button. Let's see if we have that on mine. NPR and NCR should be there. Yep. Calculator, yep. Menu. Okay, clear this. Get out, get out, escape. Clear this. Escape. <coughs> Calculator. Calculator. Go up there. Here we go. Uh, 69. I have no idea where that button is, but let's see if we can find it. Menu. 5 4 probability. I see permutation. See the permutation? That's two. Oh, this is a little bit different. I don't know. Let's see. Five. I think I'm supposed to put both numbers inside that on this one. Yep, I got to put both numbers inside that. Cleared. Here we go. Menu. Yes, combination, yeah. Five. So it's a combination three. And I think I'm supposed to put 69, comma, where's the comma? Yeah, this one is complicated. Where's the comma? Can anyone see a comma here? It's in the bottom left. Bottom, oh yes. Good eye, Scott, five. Enter. Oh, here we go. The answer is one, one, two, three, eight, five, one, three. Eleven thousand, I mean, eleven million two hundred thirty-eight thousand five thirteen. 
Now let's multiply that by 26. Enter. Is it 292,000? 201, 338 different sets of numbers. Look what they claim by the company. If you buy one ticket, see that number, the bottom number is exactly the same. Your chance of winning if you only buy one, one out of that number. So if you want to increase your chance of winning, what do you do? Buy more numbers. So it's two out of that? So next time, you take your car, Trent, sell it, and put the money on the Powerball. <laughs> if you put a $5,000 there, you can increase your chance a little bit higher. You're still gonna lose the car, so, <laughs> but at least it'll be a nice ride. How much is the Powerball ticket? Two bucks. $2. Yep. The jackpot for this week is 292 million. If you take the one-time payment, it's only 191 million point nine, 102, 192, I mean. So, they, how do they, how, uh, what's the other way to do it? They do it in increments? Like over 20 years, divide the money over 20 years. Could you make, say, um, you bought like half the tickets in that, or like all the tickets, all the different combinations? You could. How much, like. That's how much it would cost you to buy all the combinations. But when, um, so, wait, wouldn't it be double that? Yeah, double that number. Yeah. That's the number of combinations. Each one is two, two times that number. So it's going to cost you about close to 600 million. So Yep. Now, even it was 1.5 billion at that time. Now you're counting on you the only winner. It's a gamble there. Plus, if you take all the money in advance, which is in this case 191 million. You know? So anyway, you slice it. These companies or the states are smart. They figure that out. They say, "Hey, you want to be you want to do all the combination? Go ahead." Just go back to the daily number. I'll go back to the daily number. To play the daily number exact, what do you win? Anyone knows how much you win if you get all four numbers? A little bit over 6,000. You win about 6,000. Now, with the daily number, daily number, you have four numbers to choose, and you can have a repeat in them. They did the repeat on purpose there. If you win exact, win exact, that means they have to be in the same order, you get 10, I mean uh, 6,000 dollars, not 10, 6,000 some change, let's say 6,500, 6,000, doesn't really matter. But you have to win, it has to be in the same order. So now you get 10 choices for this, 10 choices for this, 10 choices for this, 10 choices for that. You have to spend what? $10,000 to win 6,500 bucks. The reason they did that, they knew there's some smart people. Because if repeat is not allowed, this would repeat. Without repeat, If they say you can't repeat that, they change the rule of that and still the same payoff. That means I got 10 for this, I got 9 for this, 8 for this, and what? 7 choice for that. And that's a big difference. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. It will be 50, 40. I will give you 5,040 bucks if you guarantee me 6,000 every day. That's why this game, when you play, somebody sat there and figured that out. Wait a minute. They probably started with this idea. They're going, well, if we give $6,000, everyone can play this number every day. And we have to give them 1000 bucks almost every single night. So they became, so no, no, you can't do that. Let's go with the repeat. And now you want to play all that. Instead of us giving them money, they have to give us right now almost $4,000 every day. With any of these games, it's tough to make money off them. They are planned, somebody sat there, figure the combination, figure the odds. It says, I mean, it has to be worth about $10 billion for somebody to go, let me put my own money, because if it's $10 billion, you take one-time payment, it's $6 billion probably. Uncle Sam comes in, takes half the money, that goes $3 billion already there. 
So even if you get two other winners, you're talking about a billion dollars. So I don't mind spending about 600 million to win a billion. I'll do that. But again, counting only three winners. If you got more than three winners, buddy, you're screwed there. You know? If you got four or five, you're losing money on that deal. Because people always said, hey, some rich people, why not just buy them? Like Donald Trump, you got all this money. Buy all the combinations. Because he will lose it then. They know it's not the right way of doing it. So that's the last piece in the chapter, is counting, figuring how many different ways. And now 